A woman should be nurturing to her man. Absolutely. I, I, I won't say that she shouldn't be. I think that men, um, they carry a lot on their backs, real men. They have to cover their families. They have to protect their children, their spouse, sometimes their parents, sometimes their spouse's parents. They carry so much. So to just have that moment of, babe, can you just hold me for like an hour or so? Absolutely. I definitely think men need affection. Do you think that there's any advantages or disadvantages to women that are nurturing opposed to those who aren't? Do you think there's any advantages or disadvantages with that? Absolutely, because that man is going to be ready to get home, okay? Like, he knows when he gets home, oh, I'm going to get, like you said, a head rub. I'm going to get hugs, kisses, love, words of affirmation. Like, they want all of that. And the woman who's kind of like, leave me alone, or she bunk over real quick, so, you know, okay, get some so I can go to bed. Like, he's going to, you know, he's going to be like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to stay with this long term. <laughs> Are there any ladies who aren't very affectionate? Should a woman be nurturing to her man or is nurturing for babies? Are there any advantages of women who are affectionate opposed to those who aren't affectionate? We're going to talk about that and so much more in this segment of It's Scary to Remarry. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. She is a mom. She is the host of podcast of the podcast Real Life with Ray. I was listening to it today. So much stuff I want to ask her about that, but we'll talk about that as well, Brave Hearts community. Let's show some love to Ray. How are you doing this evening? I am good. I'm great. I'm no complaints. I'm happy to be here. I've been following you for a minute. I know <laughs> we've been tweeting forever. So, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this topic, because of course we, you know, we kind of talked about it, you know, had the conversation in the inbox, this whole thing. Now, before we go any further, I do want to uh, play a clip and I think it's necessary for the topic um, because that's that's kind of how it came about. So let's okay. uh, listen to this topic real quick. They're not okay. Where he's gonna get it? Oh, where is he? What he, what he, where is where is he about to get it? Especially if he doesn't have a mother in his life or he doesn't yeah. have a close relationship. Where is this man getting this affection yeah. if it's not from you? And so how are you abusing that by pulling away your affections? Like, and you think that's okay. That's a punishment to someone. Like, I'm not. Yeah. And my husband, I had to tell him a long time ago, hey, I'm your place of peace. Sure. Okay. I tell him, my husband come in. I'm like, hey, you want to lay down in my lap? And I yep. rub his back. He said, I love when you rub my back. I said, absolutely. He's bald, you know. I, 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 I do rub his head. I rub his head. I rub <laughs> his back. I do whatever because I'm trying to be different than anybody in his life. I'm like, yeah. this man ain't never leaving me because everybody out here ain't operating like this. Yeah. I want him to be like, I'm not going to, if I leave this woman, I ain't going to get my head rubbed. I ain't going to get my back rubbed. I ain't, I'm not going to get it. Um, <laughs> so that's a piece from a uh, Hardly Initiated podcast. Uh, okay. I believe her name is Tara, uh, Tara Bodie, I believe. She's going to okay. actually be a guest on the show as well. We're going to talk about what husbands need, you know, from a from a wife's perspective. So I, it's going to be oh, okay. interesting. Yeah. So that just gives kind of a little bit of feedback because a lot of people went crazy in the comment section about men shouldn't be nurtured, you know, that whole thing. So I kind of I, I want to jump into this, Ray. Uh, are you the affectionate type or not? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. And can can we talk about maybe like the origins of it? Was there was there ever a time you were affectionate and then you weren't, or were you always like this? Like that? So, so I was always affectionate. Um, mm -hmm. Even though I grew up, my mom she wasn't that affectionate, but I knew she loved me. Um, but she didn't do a lot of hugs or kisses. But it'd be like I love you, you know. I buy you stuff. But it wasn't like a lot of like, it wasn't a whole lot. Um, throughout my relationships, I was affectionate, but my last relationship, 
Um, it was very toxic, and I was going through something at the time. It was, it was like my my child's father had passed. I was in a car accident. You know how things are just how on you at, at at once. And the ex came over, and I just kind of like, cause I'm he's like six four, and I kind of like put my head on his his chest, and I'm like, I just I need this right now. Mm -hmm. And he pushed me off of him. He was like. I'm not an affectionate dude like that. Like, I'm not in the mood for that. Like, don't touch me. And I don't know what went off in my head when he did that. But it's like, I stopped seeking affection. So it's like, now I'm just not affectionate. Like, the guys I've dated after him, I had a guy, he was like, yo, let's go in the mall. He kind of, he grabbed my hand. I was like, please don't touch me. And he was like, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to be touched. Like, we can walk in the mall, don't touch me. And then, like, my mom, she came to visit me, and she was, like, rubbing me on my back. She was, she was rubbing my arm. And I was like, um, I was like, Mom, don't, don't, don't do that. And she was like, why? And I was like, I just don't touch me. And so, of course, I'm in therapy because I'm trying to figure out what that's about. Like, why am I triggered so much by touching? But I'm just not affectionate. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just like, <laughs> and um, I don't know what it is. Like, even when it comes to hugging people, like I'll do like a little side hug, but I don't like for people to embrace me because I'll, I'll either get emotional. Or it's just like, I don't know. So that's what happened. That's the origin. I don't know what's up with that. Me and my therapist, we still trying to figure that out. <laughs> she's like, girl, why you don't even like the hug? But yeah, man, that's that's where it came from. Yeah, and I, I respect it and your experience because there are, when I posted that on social media, there were some women that said, I can only be affectionate to somebody that I'm committed to, you know, only maybe if I'm married or if I'm committed, but if we just kind of like kicking it, I'm really not that affectionate. So some women were saying like they actually need that security, knowing that the relationship uh, will be secure, you know, for sure, for yeah. sure. And that's true too. That's true too. So, um, yeah, because you don't want to be so loving and, uh, and, and, and nurturing and understanding to a man that's going to another woman the next night. Mm -hmm. You can go to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on the mile. You go to her for that love. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, hear, I hear you. Now I was doing some homework on the definition okay. of affection. And the definition says, are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video and it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Readily feeling or showing fondness or tenderness. So that's that's the definition. Nothing too deep. Right. But I did see something that caught my eye. Mm -hmm. You know how they have similar words, right? Like similar words to this, to that. Similar words for affectionate are bring, bring up, care for, and provide for. Mm, really? Yes. So, <laughs> and I want to talk to you about this because the second question I wanted to ask you, and I want to go somewhere with that provide for, because 
should a woman be nurturing to her man or is nurturing just for babies? Yes, a woman should be nurturing to her man. Absolutely. I I, I won't say that she shouldn't be. I think that men, um, they carry a lot on their backs, real men. They have to cover their families. They have to protect their children, their spouse, sometimes their parents, sometimes their spouse's parents. They carry so much. So to just have that moment of, babe, can you just hold me for like an hour or so? Absolutely. I definitely think men need affection. I don't know why I can't give it, but I do think they need it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because like Tara was saying in the video, like to get your, get a head, you know, get your head rubbed, that kind of thing. Like, and, and you said an hour, and I'm like, I'm down for an hour. If you got an hour, I'm, <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> you know, but uh, my my wife, we were talking about this and she was saying how a lot of women maybe feel like they just, they don't, they don't have the time uh, because she's doing just as much work as he is, you know, that whole thing, because we all carry in these workloads. So That's I can, un I can understand that too. Right. She's just like, right. oh, like I'm, I'm tired. You talking about you want your hair rubbed. I had to put the kids to bed. I had to cook dinner. I just worked 12 hours. You know, and then you're going to want something at night. Like, you can't have it all, you know, at least not. But, but. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I can see that. I I do believe that a man should be. And I know we think about nurturing from a, a, a baby perspective. But when they when you look at the similar words, when they say I provide for, I automatically thought and tell me if you agree with me as a mm -hmm. man. A man should be a protector and a provider. Absolutely. So should a man be nurturing to his wife? Yes, yes, yes. And and this is the thing when it comes to men and nurturing. I think sometimes, and I've experienced this in my relationships, a lot of men feel like a form of nurture, nurture, nourishment is having sex like you try to hug yeah. your man and he like oh, let me grab your, your booby let me grab your butt and you like listen I don't want to hunt right now I just want you to hold me like bro hold me like relax but I think that's their way of nurturing like if I just give her some real quick you know I'm nurturing her but it's like no sometimes we just want to be held we want to um especially women with father issues who didn't grow up with men being very affectionate to them like I I didn't grow although I had my brothers and uncles and stuff they weren't affectionate like you know they'd be like oh I love you give me a little punch in the shoulder but it was never really like hugs like that so and then my dad wasn't even there so Women who have those type of issues and they're not used to affection from men, absolutely, like, nurture me, please. Love me and don't just want some all the time. Okay? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's real because that definition, and of course, it just says care for and encourage the growth or development of. And I think yeah. that's when we just look at it from a, a, a baby perspective. So it's... I'm learning, I have learned over the years that mm -hmm. words, you you have to understand the definition of a word because a lot of words we just throw around because we heard it on the podcast or we see we seen it on a YouTube video. And but mm -hmm. and it messes up lines of communications and relationships as well. Because I'm mm -hmm. talking to my wife and we're talking about something, I'll say, give me your definition of, and then that way we can get some clarity because the way she might see something and the way I see something are totally different. So we miss those lines of communication. Oh, I love that. I think that's very healthy. I really do love that y'all do that. Seriously. Cause you're right. Sometimes what we call this, you may call that. And yeah, that's a good idea. When I do get a man, I'm gonna do that. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to, yeah, you got to do it because for years, my wife and I would miscommunicate. Yeah. And we saying the same thing, just different. Mm hmm. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So those similar words. So when I thought about that, I said, OK, this is I was going to put it in the Instagram in the in the comment section. I said, you know what? I'm not going to be I'm going to leave it alone. I ain't even about to do all that. You should have. <laughs>
Because the whole providing is a, as a form of affection. I'm even wondering, like, the men who just provide for the family and they feel like that's affection. You know, like, oh, I'm giving you money. I'm buying you whatever I want. So that's showing affection. Like, I wonder, like, that's that's kind of crazy that you said that. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Similar words. Yeah. And, uh, so what what do you think that there's any advantages or disadvantages to women that are nurturing opposed to those who aren't? Do you think there's any advantages or disadvantages with that? Absolutely. Because that man is going to be ready to get home. Okay. Like he knows when he gets home, oh, I'm going to get, like you said, a head rub. I'm going to get hugs, kisses, love, words of affirmation. Like they want all of that. And the woman who's kind of like, leave me alone or she bunk over real quick. So, you know, okay, get some so I can go to bed. Like, he's going, he's going, you know, he's going to be like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to stay with this long term. <laughs> and then, like, from that, even from that standpoint, like, I would think as a man, you'd be worried about how she's going to nurture your children. Like, well, dang, if you don't even nurture me, are you going to be cold like this towards our children? So, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I do think those type of women, they have more of an advantage. Mm -hmm. so and i have seen too where there are women who who nurture their children but isn't affectionate or nurturing towards their man or their husband Ooh, that's true that's yeah. true yeah yeah that's that's sad yeah and it's real though because some women look like you're a grown man you you should have got that from your mama you know mm-mm mm-mm <laughs> And then when it comes to mamas, like sometimes some mamas, they're afraid to show affection towards their son because especially single parents, single mamas, because it's like your daddy's not here. So I need you to man up. So I'm not going to be as loving as affectionate. I just got to a point in my life where I started like rubbing my son on his back, giving him a little side hug. You OK? You good? You need to talk, you know, and he'll just look at me like, go away. But I'm like, dang, I need to do better. But I didn't even realize that for a long time. I was kind of tough on him because I just wanted him to be a man. Like, I didn't know any better. So, for sure. For sure. I get it because you, you're you speaking to my life, right? That happened yeah. to me growing up. My mom, it was four of us, but my brother and sister, they were older, so they moved out. So, with mm -hmm. my sister, my little sister and I, I basically like had to watch after her, you know, being parentified. My mom was tough towards me. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't really get hugs or words of affirmation. I didn't, I like, I didn't get none of that stuff. My mom was like tough. Like I got to work. I got to pay these bills. I got to make sure y'all good. Don't, don't come to me for, for no hugs and kisses. Like I ain't got time for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel her pain. I mean, you don't realize how it affects your child until they really tell you. One day, my son just broke down. He broke down and, and he just, he had enough. And we sat down and talked and I was like, okay, I'm sorry. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to figure life out while you're trying to figure life out. I don't know. Yeah. So um, I hope that you forgive mom and you just give her a little grace. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, just hearing you talk about it, I was like, man, she's telling my story. Yeah. So yeah. I totally get it. Uh and and you know, moms and I we're, we're good, That's but good. I do see how it affected me, especially in my first marriage. I'm I'm more uh affectionate now because I'm older. But in my first marriage, I wasn't affectionate at all because I just wasn't used to it. Yeah. Yeah, it feels foreign. Like, mm -hmm. why are you touching me? Get off of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's and that's that's so sad. It is. Yeah. But I'm glad you're good now. <laughs> yeah. So so just just keep uh you gotta, you know, put them reps in. So just keep hugging them, just keep giving your son, you know, giving them what he needs. Cause yeah. yeah, he'll be good. You know, and I, I understand the mom's perspective. Like I don't want him to grow up to be no, you know. Yeah. I yeah, don't want him right? to be, you know, soft or getting beat up on or <laughs> like, you know, and then when they when they have moments in life and they break down, it's like, oh dang, I could have I could have given you a hug. I didn't have to be so mean or hard on you, you know. 
I started telling my son, thank you, because he would take the dog out and do all his chores. And I'd just be like, go do this, go do that, blah, blah, blah. And then um, one day I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, thank you, because I work hard and you, you know, you help mom out. Thank you. And it's just little things like that where it's like, OK, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, you know. So, yeah, but that's a whole nother <laughs> <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I know. I have a whole parenting. Yeah, I, I totally get it. There was I want to talk about this tweet. Cause okay. <laughs> I, yeah, because I, I told you we were going to talk about it. So we we're going to talk about it. Right. You say it. <laughs> Y'all really think lust is the key to a successful relationship. It is a million women who's just as freaky as you, sis. Please offer more. These men rarely marry sluts. Don't <laughs> let the internet and these rapper baby mamas fool y'all. Let's That's talk about that in detail because that that was a that was a that was a word, but yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, um, so here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. I grew up in South Carolina. I talk about that all the time, and it was always instilled in my head that classy was always better from my brothers. Like they tell me, like, oh, because I remember my brother had this one girl. Like she used to come around, but she always come around at night. And then he never married her. He was with her for years and he never married her. And when I was old, I was like, why didn't you ever marry, you know, blah, blah. And he was like, because she was a slut. She was easy. He was like, but my girl, my wife, I had to fight for her. She made me work for that. And that always stuck with me because I remember like being in high school and like seeing her walking past my bathroom and I'd just be like, oh, hey, girl, you leaving? All right. Hey. You hungry? We got food in the kitchen. <laughs> like, okay. And then, you know, I just, I never knew the dynamic. I knew during the holidays, like, she wouldn't be there. Mm. So I'm like, dang, but she'd be here every night. Like, what's that about? Wow. So then when I was older, my brother, he was like, yeah, it was like, that was my home. And I'm like, oh, okay. You should have had it in our mama house. But anyway, um, but that's something that always like just stood out to me. So for me, it's like, I just know from my brothers, from my uncles, my friends, like they, they just, they play with women like that. They do. They play with them. And even when I was young and a little promiscuous, like, come on now, I'm not none of those men wives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just being real. Right. So when I see women being fast and being extra and showing their bodies online for the wrong type of attention, like I understand you're young and you have to grow, but when you get older and you're not married, you're going to look back on your past and you're going to be like, dang, maybe I shouldn't have slept with Pookie and all his friends. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I feel like, the rapper baby mamas, right? They have this culture of rapper baby mamas where the, these these young girls, they're like, oh, they're winning because, you know, she's twerking on her man and, and he's buying her diamonds and this and that. Listen, a real man is never going to expose his wife online. You're never going to put your wife's body online, period. Because that's yours. That's sacred. That's something you're not going to share with other other men. So I'm trying to tell you, these girls, like, listen, if your man is willing to show your naked booty on Twitter or any other app, baby, he doesn't respect you, period. You're not a wife. You're something to play with. Now, he can call you a wifey because I've been called wifey, but I ain't a wife. Mm. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm keeping it real. Like, yeah. I mean. Uh, a man can say all day, I will marry you, but until he marry you, you're not that. You're nothing. Yeah. You're just something to play with. And, and, and so that's what that that was because I see so many women complain. Like, there's this girl on my timeline. She would complain about dating, but she shows her naked body every other day. Girl, nobody is going to marry you. All these men online, they... come on now. Imagine you in the store with your wife and dude like, oh, yeah, I just saw her naked butt. Uh, two days ago that is not cute yeah. so for me like i'm just like i want y'all to really get it i'm sorry i'm real animated what i thought it's my personality <laughs> and no keep it real this this is what we do because i know uh especially with social media it's easy to, to show off your body and stuff like that because a lot of times especially if 
if a man is saying what you are saying. If a mm -hmm. man says it, you have a lot of women that's like, you're not going to police my body and you're not going to do this. You're not just like, I don't know if you saw the tweet I had the other day, but I talked about having the, the uh, rest and be face. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 And I said, I need to do better. Yeah. <laughs> women came for me, though, because they were like, you're not going to police my face. You can't tell me how I should look. And I was just like. All I said was, just like you said, if you have people on the timeline complaining and I get inboxes and it, well, maybe you should just smile, you know, just smile. Yeah. yeah. You ain't got to twerk, but you could just smile. That, that helps, you know, that helps. Just, <laughs> But I, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm bad with that too. Though. I, well, I think for me, I just be real focused on what I'm doing. So sometimes when I'm walking, I'm just focused. Like I'm not really thinking but when you said that i was like i do need to do better i need to stop me mugging so much it's not cute um and when it, i want to go back to the policing i feel like women especially black women i hate to say this i don't care who gets mad i feel like um we have in our minds that nobody has our back which in a lot of cases they don't Nobody has our back. So we have to be the man. We have to be the woman. We have to hold it down. And we're getting to a point now where a man can't tell us nothing. Nothing. You say you follow the Bible, but yeah, you're not going to submit to your husband. Yeah, you don't want your husband to tell you anything. You want to be the woman of the house, the man of the house. Which is it? Which is it? You just gave good advice. You're saying, hey. Listen, I'm just giving y'all advice. Maybe if you smiled a little bit, you can attract the right kind of person. That's it. That could be friends, a man, anything. So when you said it to me, I was like, yo, I received that because I be mugging so bad. So that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, because I, I had women that, that came and, and, and my sisters, y'all know I love y'all. This, this isn't that red pill, blue pill. Y'all know I got love for y'all. I was just trying to give some game and a lady told me, what did she say? Oh, she said, that's crazy for me to have to smile all day. Ain't nobody got time to smile all day. And I was like, I was just saying just basic stuff like eye contact. If you see a guy and he see you and y'all both like each other, you know, he's, you know, he cute, she fine, whatever, just smile. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's inviting. You know? No, it is. It is. Yeah, you mean bugging in the guy? He's like, oh, I was gonna talk to her, but never mind, <laughs> right? Yeah, and then they jump online and man, get on my nerves. I can't stand me. I was like, come on, we gotta do a little better. We do, we do. We'll get there. It's okay. <laughs> what, what about the man though? Oh, I'm just like, ah, oh, okay. Oh, they kill me with that. They kill. What about the man? I'm like, we talking about you right now, and vice versa. You know, even yeah. I, I sent something the other day that I think. Somebody asked about what was my, what, where am I struggling at or something as a man, where are you struggling or something? And I was just like my defensiveness and ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like That's real. Yeah. I still struggle with that. Lord, no, you can ask my wife. I get on her nerves, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I don't know. The ego thing. I just feel like that's natural. You can't do anything with your ego. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. No, I I get it. <laughs> I want to jump into this bonus round. Okay. Uh, this <laughs> is yeah. This is gonna be you on cut. So I this is nothing is off limits. What is the biggest What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Um, the biggest mistake I would say is uh doing wifely duties as a girlfriend. I think that some women, they get in relationships and they try so hard to keep that man that they completely lose themselves. They're doing everything they said they wouldn't do. And you're giving your all to a man who hasn't fully given his all to you. And sometimes it's not even about 
it's not even about him. It's almost, it's just like, it's a competition thing. Like I'm going to make sure I'm number one and any woman that he made, any other woman he may possibly want, I'm going to go over and beyond to make sure he stays with me. Now there's nothing wrong for fighting for your spot, but you have to get to a point where you just stop doing all this one, these wonderful things. And this man, he's still not committing. He's still not answering the phone whenever you call 12 times. He's still not responding to text messages. <laughs> and then he hits you. You hit him on Tuesday. Then he hits you on Thursday. Say, oh, can you come over, cook, wash my clothes, <laughs> bunk over real quick. And then you're done behind, go over there and do that. That's women. Be and then women be getting attached and falling in love with men that never said they was in love. Like that man never said he loved you. He barely said he liked you. Why are you in love? Why are you mad? Why are you blasting him online? Relax. <laughs> that's the biggest mistake. <laughs> like, you're doing too much. Calm down. Yeah. That's it. Maybe that's just me, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, they be, you know, they be we be falling in love. Like you have a nice day and you think I don't know because I'm I'm 41. I don't know if you remember Trapper Keepers. So remember Trapper Keepers we yeah. have? Yeah. You sit you sitting there writing so and so and so and so on your trapper keeper. Like that's not we be grown as hell. We Oh, I bet we be cute. I bet our kids be cute and be planning vacations. And that man, that man barely call you. So that's what I think. Just saying. Uh, no, that's real. Because I, I try to give brothers some game. I'm like, man, stop sliding these women DMs showing, you know, D pics and all this other stuff. And I'm like, look, I'm like, yeah, how, are you, how are too. you? Yeah, like, how are you being so aggressive? I'm like, Come on, man! You gotta do better. You know, I, I don't understand these dudes. I'm, I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the last of a dying breed or something. I ain't nobody about to get it. You know what I'm saying? You know. Nope. I know that's right. You been not. You see how them men begin blast them husbands begin blasting and boyfriends on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Them girls be ready. Like, <laughs> yeah, come get your husband on my DM. Screenshot. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> you like, oh, never mind. You better stop. Stay out of people DM. Mm -mm. I don't play like that. Yeah. I'm like, mm -mm. Stop falling for the okie doke, man. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh, God. You caught me off guard with that one. Um, <laughs> so my parents, um, it was a very toxic, toxic relationship. Um, my mom left my dad because my dad was irresponsible and she said that she wanted more stability for her children. So she left him and I salute that, mm -hmm. but it's two things. My dad being missing, of course it affected me because I always wanted my dad there, but my mom was always an alpha woman. So I used, I, I've always seen my mom be the leader and all well, it's only been two relationships. She was married to my stepdad, and they divorced, and she got with somebody else. My mother was always the leader, and it got to a point where I remember one time in seventh grade. I don't know why I always remember this. I asked my stepdad. I was like, "Can I get uh twenty dollars for the book fair or whatever?" Because my mom, she already went to work, and he was like, "Ask your mama." And it got to a point where every time I would ask him for stuff, he always be like, "Ask your mom, ask your mom, ask your mama." And so I never really saw a leader in a man like in my home. It was always my mother that was the leader. I even remember like things would happen in the house. Something will break or we need a new roof or it'd be something going on. And I always would see my mom like taking care of business and my stepfather just be like, oh, here's the money. But she'd be the one handling the business. So for me, when it came to my relationships, I had to somewhat be the boss. Like, you can't just come in here and control this. And um, I'm trying to break out of that. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Me and Jesus, we working together. We got a plan. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, this is not in my notes, but as I hear you speak, and I, I guess you can't speak for all women, but just let me know what you think. Okay. Do women, are they, do they really want a traditional man? In the sense of he he's gonna he's gonna pay all the bills, he's gonna take care of everything, you don't have to work anymore. At the same time, you have to know what comes with that. Mm -hmm. Mm 
mm-hmm. you know I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying because a lot of times I hear women say they want tradition, they want a traditional man. And I'm like, do you really want a traditional man? What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts is I don't think a lot of women know what a traditional man is. Mm-hmm. I think they just say what they see online. Mm-hmm. They don't know what a traditional man is. They didn't grow up around a traditional man. They are completely clueless when it comes to that. They don't know. And when it comes to a traditional man, um, it's so many female bosses online that I I think that the thought of a man coming in and saying, okay, I got this, you just relax, you take care of the house. I got I don't even think these new women, I don't even think they can handle that. They say they can, but they so want to be the boss and want to brag about holding it down. It's like a man coming in and saying, relax, I got it. They can't handle that. They say they can. They say they want it, but they can't because some of these women, their egos are just as big as men. Do you see how women talk now? I have never seen so many women call grown men the B word. Like that was never a thing back and you know, back in the day. And like now it's like the, they so aggressive and mannish and this and that. So you say you want a traditional man, but you act like a traditional man. You need to act like a woman and then your traditional man will come, mm-hmm. period. Mm. So that's how I feel. I want a traditional man because I'm traditional and I believe in the biblical principle of marriage. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know. Cause yeah, because now that I'm older, knowing what I know now, if I could do it all over again, I would make sure that. I I made enough money where my wife had the option to work or not. Where when we get together, I'm like, look, you're gonna be taken care of, but if you want to work, that's on you. You know, if that's what you want to do. Where she has that flexibility, like, okay, I'm gonna stay at home. You know, because I I and, and that's my goal. You know, I'm I'm still alive, so that's that's still the goal. Yeah, I've seen you say that you want you want her to stop working. Yeah, I, you know, that's that's my so to the younger guys that's listening to this or watching this, you know, get your money up. Now, I will say there are some times where guys like I'm not about to get married till I get my money right. And I'm thinking like, do you ever really get your money right, though? You don't, <laughs> you know, from bills to kids to student loans, <laughs> whatever you may have going on, like. You never get it right. Mm. You just have to find your person and and work on a budget and um just make that your both of your goals. Like let's both try to work on getting out of debt mm. and getting our money right. Um, we don't have to stunt online. We don't have to do all this extra stuff. We just need to save money and get these bills paid off so we can live how we want to live. That's mm. it. Because, I mean, I feel like right now with inflation, you saying you're going to wait until your money gets right to get married. <laughs> you're never going to get married. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because <laughs> there's a lot going on right now. Like Cheetos, it's almost $5 and I feel some type of way. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> nah, that's real. Who makes a better spouse? Someone never married or someone divorced? Mm, I will say someone divorced. Because... Someone divorced, they, I would hope (laughs) by the second marriage that they learn from their mistakes, right? Like they know, like, are they more mature now? Like a lot of people got married when they were younger. So now they're older, they're more mature um, and they can respect the marriage and really do right. Um, I I, I say never, if you've never been married, I'm not going to say you won't make a good spouse, but I just feel like it's a lot that you have to learn. And that could be that could be a lie. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. That Especially in today's culture, right? Marriage yeah. is so shaky. You know, people are together for two, three years, they divorce. You know, so exactly. Yeah, exactly. What's harder for you to say? Is it I apologize? I need help. I love you. I was wrong. Uh, I need help. Want to talk just, about that? It's the alpha mom 
Mm. It's alpha mom. My mom has always been the type of person. Um, if she needed something, she she just she work hard for it. So for me, I'm the type of person. I just don't tell people when I need help. I just do what I need to do. That's mm. it. And then I don't like. I've had people in my life, especially ex boyfriends, hold things over my head. Like mm. my let the last, and that's why I said my last relationship really messed me up. Because he would say and do all kind of crazy things. But I remember one time, um. It was something I wanted to do. And he was like, um, oh, it was a job I, I was trying to go for. And he was like, you don't need to work. Like, I'm paying all the bills. What do you want to work for? Mm -hmm. He was like, just keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, well, what do I do? He was like, just follow me around and do, do we do what we do. And I was just like, oh, I don't like that. I'm a puppy. I got to follow you around. <laughs> like. <laughs> and I just and, it, and he would always just bring up how he paid all the bills and I didn't want for anything. And he was like, anything you need, I'm getting it for you. So just shut up. And he was just very disrespectful with it. And I remember after that, I said, I would never put my well-being, my stability, my money in another person's hands. And I'm still there. So I can't I can't go out there and say I need help. I just can't. Mm. I understand yeah trust can be tough because i think that's the other end of the spectrum where some women are like no nah, i'm not about to depend on you even though you can provide everything like that's scary for a lot of women because they just don't know it's like you have to be perfect for this person or else they're gonna throw it in your face or make you feel exactly, that exactly. that's it yeah last question yes is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Um, I think it's easier to love someone else because we're so hard on ourselves. We are. Mm -hmm. We are. And that's something I'm working on. Like we just sometimes you look at some of your mistakes and you beat yourself up and you don't even realize it. And um, but it's easy to see so much in someone else. I have a mentor. And one day I was giving her a lot of compliments and she was like, um, she was like, I wonder why you don't feel the same way about yourself. Because she was like, what you, some of the things you say you see in me, I see in you. And I was like, thank you for that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Because I didn't see that in me. So it is easier to love somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. it just is. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know. No, for sure. There's there's no right or wrong answer. I just always like to ask my guests those questions for our bonus round. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the podcast? I was listening to it today and uh, I was listening to your testimony. I was like, wow. So, uh, yeah, tell us about the podcast. So the podcast is just my uh, real life. You know, from my Twitter, I love to tell stories <laughs> and I am in the process of writing a book. Um, it's just my real life. I really like to talk about my experiences because for a long time, um, the way that I used to deal with things I went through in life was drinking. That's how I used to deal with things and partying and doing all kinds of horrible things and no shade to people who drink, but that was really a coping mechanism for me. And it became very unhealthy. And so um, when I get on the podcast and I talk, that's my way of releasing some of the things that I've been through. And ultimately I want to help people and it's ministry. It's ministry. Like God wants us to share our testimony. He wants us to help people. Um, we have people assigned to our ministries. And so if I'm getting messages of people saying, hey, I was struggling with this and you spoke about it. Thank you so much. I feel like if that one person, if I help that one person, I've done my job. So that's what real life with Ray is. It's just real life. It's my real life. I'm not sugarcoating anything. I'm not I'm not embellishing. I'm just telling real things that happened to me. Um, and I got some stuff coming, too. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, for sure. <laughs> Well, this has been a phenomenal episode. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. I'll have everything linked up in the description below. But Okay, I was going to ask with my phone, my phone right here. Fix it, Jesus. Um, so Twitter, Miss Ray Bay, R-A-Y-B-A-Y. And then my IG is Miss Ray Bay. My TikTok is Miss Ray Bay. And then, of course, Real Life with Ray, that is the podcast. Um, That's all I'm really on. 
And um, you guys can contact me, talk to me, whatever. And Sean, now you got to come to my podcast so we can do an interview and I'm going to ask you some questions. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I, you know, you know, I've been running my mouth all day, so I'm down. There's nothing wrong with that, but you know what? You speak with a purpose. I don't never see you tweet no foolishness. All you be tweeting is real stuff. I'm like, that's my dude. We be talking that real, like. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm accountable. I can't uh, be out here just wilding, you know. Um, it's that, okay, I got me on a short leash. My leash is like this long. I can't get away with nothing. So. <laughs> Yeah, I get, I, got you. I get I get corrected quick the minute I get out of line. So I know that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I can't get away with stuff. Yeah, but thanks again so much for being a guest. I'm glad we were actually that we actually got a chance to make this happen because I know we've been talking and, and tweeting. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, we finally made this happen. Brave Hearts community, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. The uh, podcast is growing. The YouTube channel is growing. Thank you all so much for the support. If you have your Brave Hearts t-shirt or if you're Scary to Remarry shirt, like rep the brand. I would like to see you all on my timelines. I appreciate all the support. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Leave a rating and review. Would love to hear from you and how the podcast is helping you. Share this with a friend. You never know who needs this.